Notice I've had a bit of a change of location. I brought you down here to Point Cart right here on the Sunshine Coast. It's a beautiful day. There's a few clouds in the sky, but mostly it's going to be a fine day, I think. So I hope it's a beautiful day in your part of the world and that you're ready to get into this practice. Now, before we start, I'd like to just talk about mothering and parenting and losing your calm or your zen, if you like. Now, for those of you who've been writing to me and saying, how do you stay calm all the time? How do you stay um, so patient with your kids? I'd like to thank you for believing that myth. <laughs> it is not the case at all. Um, obviously, we like to show our best selves. So obviously, I'm not showing you when um, it's five o'clock and there's no food and I haven't thought about dinner. I haven't stopped all day. Baby's crying. Eamon wants me to look at this mummy, look at this mummy. And I'm just feeling um, on my last string. So you're not around in my house when those things happen. And whilst I don't always keep my calm, I do draw on my yoga at those times, especially to just try and calm down, get through the hour or so that it takes to get to bedtime. <laughs> and so whilst I'm not always calm, I do believe that this practice really helps me in my parenting and in my mothering. So I hope that today I can show you some of those tools and it can help you find a little bit more zen in your day as well. So let's get going. We're gonna start with a little bit of a, a flow. And now the reason for that is we spend a lot of our time in our heads and that's what's creating the stress that we're feeling. It's, it's not the child screaming, it's not the children asking a thousand questions. It's how we're relating to it and how we're perceiving it. So. You might have children who are very high needs and respond to them in a way that's very calm and patient because you're able to do that. Whereas another person might have a child who is quite easygoing and still be responding in a way that's quite stressful because it is about what's going on up here. So we're going to do a quick flow to get out of our heads and into our bodies because that's where we really need to be in order to practice from a calmer place or parent from a calmer place. So let's get going. Come to the front of your mat. So just bring the feet under the hips, the hands to the heart center, roll the shoulders back and down, set up good alignment first. As you inhale, rise the arms up. And as you exhale, bend at the knees, forward, fold down. Just release through the head and neck, maybe sway from side to side, finding some length in the body. This is the first time you've connected in with you today. You might be noticing that there's some tension in certain parts of the body. Just breathe into them. Inhale, let's halfway lift. Straighten out those legs. Straighten out the back. Exhale, fall. Inhale, step or jump those feet back. Come to plank. So your plank may look like this on the knees or it might be up on the feet. It's totally up to you. Look forward, exhale, lower down. Inhale, you might find cobra to start or perhaps an up dog if that's where you are. Exhale, tuck the toes, lift all the way back, pedal out through the heels. All right, so from your down dog, let's inhale the right leg up, bend the knee, open out the hip and even out through the arms. Just opening through this lower body here. And then inhale, return the hips Move the body forward, draw the knee into the chest, exhale, send the leg back. Inhale, draw the knee forward, this time place it between the hands. Inhale, rise up, high lunge. Exhale, open out, warrior two. Inhale, draw the hand back. So don't worry too much about thinking about it, just move and try and flow with the breath. Inhale, step the foot all the way back, three-legged dog, return the leg down. Inhale, shift forward. Take the knees if you need. Exhale, lower down. Inhale to rise. Exhale, down dog. Let's bend the knees. Look towards the hands. Step or jump the feet forward. Find forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend, sweep and rise all the way to the sky. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. 
exhale, step or jump the feet back. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhale to rise. Exhale, down dog. So pedal out the feet here for a moment. Just take a few deep breaths here. Connecting in with areas of the body that are feeling tension and trying to exhale, releasing any energy from that area. Inhale, left leg rises. Exhale, open out through the hip. Inhale, square it back off. Draw the knee into the chest. Press the floor away. Exhale, send it back. So building some heat now. And the reason we want to do this is the best way to get you out of that head. Get rid of that stress. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, open out. Draw back. Exhale, windmill the hands. Frame that front foot. Step back through three-legged dog. Exhale, lower it down. Shift the body weight forward. Chaturanga. Inhale to rise. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look towards the hands, step or jump, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. This time, bend the knees, rise the chest, find your chair pose. So a lot of heat building here. See if you can gently scoop that tailbone down. Activating the core, the pelvic floor. And just breathe here. Inhale, rising all the way up, press into the floor. Exhale, lower down. Let's inhale, bring the hands underneath the chest. Open up to one side. Exhale, lower down. Inhale to rise. Exhale, lower. Completely forward fold, maybe even wrapping the arms around the back of the legs, release through the head and neck in particular. And just breathe. Exhale, release the hands. Step that right leg back. Take the knee down to the floor and inhale up into your high lunge. So leaning forward, rather low lunge, sorry. Leaning forward into this front knee. So you're getting a really nice opening through that right leg. So if it's too intense, you can bring the hands down. You can bring them to the mat. You can really rest that upper body onto the thigh, or if you feel good, express the arms upwards. We often hold a lot of emotions in our hips, so you might be feeling a little bit, oh, this is uncomfortable. And it might actually be because you need to let something go. So as the emotions rise up, it might be anger, it might be stress, it might be frustration, it might be resentment, whether that be towards yourself, towards the kids, towards your partner, family, friends, whatever it is. Just let the emotion rise and then let it go. Let's inhale, open out through the chest, interlace the fingers, open up further. And just breathe. Exhale, re release the hands down, frame that front foot, tuck the back toes, leave the right hand by the left foot and open up into a twist. So hopefully twisting out all these emotions, letting them go and surrendering to just being here in the body in this moment. Let's inhale, step the front foot in, return to our forward fold, interlace the fingers on the elbows and just take a few deep breaths. Release the hands, let's bow pull, inhale. Straight back, straight legs, exhale, fold. Breathing into those hamstrings. And then inhale, step the left leg back this time. Take the knee down. Inhale to rise. And just leaning forward into that hip, surrendering into whatever these hips have in store for you today. And at the same time, surrendering into whatever your day has in store for you. And just breathe. It might be that you have kids jumping on you right now. See if you can breathe away the stress that that brings into your practice. That is the best practice that you can do is to not necessarily be in such a serene environment, but be actively practicing releasing the stress right here on your mat. Let's exhale, release the hands down, lift the back knee, find the high lunge, hand to floor, inhale, twist. 
exhale, lower down, press the floor away, step the back foot back, find down dog for a moment. And then exhale, take the knees down. Take a seat back to child's pose. Let's take a moment here. Taking a breath and feeling grateful for everything you do have in your life, in your family life, in your home. Finding the smallest of things to be grateful for, food on the table, happy, healthy kids, whatever it may be. And then inhale, come up onto the knees, take the hands under the shoulders, inhale. Exhale, look back towards the thighs. As you breathe in, notice the energy and the air entering the lungs. And as you exhale, breathe out the stress and the tension. Inhale, energy. Exhale, stress. Once more. Inhale. And exhale. Let's tuck those toes under, lift back through down dog. And then slowly walk the hands all the way back, finding forward fold at the back of your mat. And then very slowly pressing into the feet, rising all the way to stand. Bring the hands to heart. Just gently closing down the eyes, connecting with the earth through all four corners of both feet. So pressing into your mat with the feet, feeling the kneecaps drawing up, feeling the core drawing in, the tailbone gently pressing down, shoulders back and down, head lifting up. Let's inhale the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers and open up through the chest. So there's been studies done that show if you approach life with an open chest, with big open movements, it can actually affect how you feel in the world as well. So instead of closing off and feeling quite insecure in whatever it is you're doing, if you can really concentrate on changing the body first, you can really change the mental space as well. Let's inhale the right leg up. Exhale, We're starting to shift forward, taking that leg back. So quite challenging, feel free to release the hands if you need. And then inhale, bring the knee into the chest. So just finding some focus and flow here. Exhale, sending the leg back. Inhale to rise. One more time, exhale. And inhale, bring that knee in. We're just going to find an easy tree pose. So that may be for you at the ankle. It may be just below or above the knee, or it might be to the top of the thigh. Just find whatever suits you. You may like to inhale, rise the arms. And just stay here and breathe, feeling your space here on the mat, your space in the world and knowing that you belong right here and right now. Slowly exhale the hands back through the heart, peel the leg off, come back, standing proudly into both feet, rolling the shoulders back and down. Inhale, interlace the fingers, open up through the chest. Drawing the knee back in on the left side and then exhale, tipping forward. Inhale, draw the knee in. So find that spot to focus on. And don't move your eyes from it. And that can work in your daily life as well. If you have something to focus on, whether it be calm breathing, whether it be getting to bedtime with a book that you enjoy, let's find our tree. That focus, that knowing that you can get through anything the day throws at you can really help to make it through those moments of stress that are just passing moments. Just breathe here, feeling the lungs. If you're practicing outside, maybe being aware of the 
sounds and the feelings around you. So I've got a beautiful breeze here on my back despite the heat of the sun. You can hear the waves of the ocean rolling behind me. Perhaps you can too. Let's exhale. Bring the hands back to heart. Slowly release. So from your tree pose, I'd like you to come down towards the floor into a low squat. So just take the toes out and exhale down into Malasana. So you might find that the heels find the earth, perhaps they don't today, it doesn't really matter. And just stay here and breathe, really opening up proudly through the chest. Now, if you're like most people in the West, this is probably fairly uncomfortable to be staying in for any period of time. But I want you to stay here and see if you can breathe away the thoughts that are really holding on tight to that feeling of uncomfortable. Because the thing is, we really can breathe away more than we know. That uncomfortable feeling is just a feeling, just like any other, that comes and passes and goes if we allow it to. I was reading this book the other day by this woman, amazing woman, who she was a brain scientist and she had a stroke. And so she's talking about how the brain works. And so let's just release the hands, bring them to the floor and release the legs down. Just come to a comfortable seat. So one of the things that they found through the research and through her experience was that our, our experience of feelings, how we feel them, is created by the chemicals in our body. So our body creates the feeling of anger and it creates the feeling of fear and all those other emotions that we experience. But we experience them as a physical thing for 90 seconds. If we still feel anger after the 90 seconds, it's because we've chosen to buy into it with the mind, which was mind blowing to me. How often have you had a, an experience where you felt anger at someone and then you've continued to play into that feeling for the next day, the next week, maybe the next month. So I've been trying to apply that to my own parenting and when I'm feeling frustrated, when my kids do something that I find brings up these emotions, I just try and write it out for 90 seconds. So whether it's coming to the breath, whether it's throwing myself up into handstand, if you're following me on any of my social media channels, you know I like to do that a lot. Whatever it is that for you can give you that 90 second break, that you can then come back and reset and breathe those emotions away because you don't need to keep playing into them. The anger is not going to help you, it's not going to help your kids. If anything, it's just going to create more of those physiological feelings and then the cycle just rolls on. So come to an easy seat, maybe bring the hands to heart center, maybe release them onto the thighs, whatever works for you. Roll the shoulders back and down. So just finding a comfortable place to just tune into that breath. So in our practice today, I'd like to encourage you to notice the emotions as they rise, to simply label them and then let them slide on by. So find the breath as you inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose, gently constricting the throat. So still staying with our ujjayi breath, it gives us a nice place to focus from. Notice as the lungs fill the lower belly, as the side ribs expand all the way into the top of the chest. And just stay here with the breath, noticing the pause on either end of the inhale and the exhale. Maybe noticing the sounds around you. Can you hear children playing? Can you hear dishes clanging, the washing machine going, whatever it is, cars outside. Just tune into the sounds around you. And as emotions arise or feelings or thoughts, simply label them. If it's just a thought, simply think thinking and let it go. It sounds silly, but simply labeling it rather than getting involved in thoughts of I'm no good at this meditation business, I can't sit still, can't slow the mind. Just label it. It's just thinking, let it go. It's very simple. Same for emotions. If you're feeling frustrated that the mind is running, monkey mind is going crazy, simply label it frustration. Let it go. If you're feeling resentment, perhaps 
there's someone in the house who you don't feel has been pulling their weight, maybe you feel like you're doing too much, simply label it resentment and let it go. Simply breathe away these emotions with each exhale. And starting to reconnect with this place inside that is free from all of this external stimulus and the emotions that are so fleeting. Finding that place of calm that you can tap into whenever you need it. So for the five o'clock bedtime, bath time hour, <laughs> or maybe it's for you nap time when children resist for an hour to have a 10 minute sleep, <laughs> like mine do. Tap into that place for these times of frustration and hopefully find a calmer place that you can parent from. When you're ready, slowly bring the hands to the heart and gently open up the eyes. I hope that today's practice has maybe opened up your eyes to a different way to be, a different way to approach your parenting. So it's not necessarily about changing behaviours, it's not about always getting better strategies. Unfortunately or fortunately, children develop at the rate they develop many times regardless of what we do and in many ways parenting and parenting calmly is about controlling how we react and how we interact with our children when these emotional outbursts are happening because remember their emotions are only just beginning and they don't know how to react to them in a constructive way whereas we can start to tap into that and really teach them through our own behavior that Emotions don't have to roll on and be played out. They can simply happen and we can breathe them away. So I hope that you enjoyed today's practice. It was a pleasure practicing in this beautiful location with you. There'll be more to come, I'm sure. I've really enjoyed being out of the house. If you enjoyed this practice, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. If you would like the longer version, I have it in my studio. So it is a membership price. It's only $14.95 a month, so less than a dollar a day. It's a great way to practice anywhere, anytime, and to really find, so it's a great way to practice anytime, anywhere. You can log on to your laptop, your phone, your um, iPad, whatever you've got, wherever you are, kids jumping all over you, it doesn't matter, you don't have to escape to a studio, which I know can be incredibly difficult. So please join me in the studio, we have lots of fun, we've got a private Facebook group, it's a great place to hang out. From my heart to yours, namaste, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week.